All right, students, we're gonna do some quick drawing today. Uh, you'll need a pencil. You'll do need these things. You'll need an eraser too. Uh, let's get into some quick drawing. These are supposed to help you figure out what you're gonna wanna make. Um, so I'm just gonna try to problem solve some things and we're gonna quick draw these things. These are the most sort of common things that students ask me to know how to draw. And so we're gonna start with one of them, um, a car. Some people want to draw a car. Well, the easiest way to draw a car is by one point perspective. Just draw some lines, draw some lines out. Well, let's just draw the front of the car, a little rectangle. Then we are going to connect those edges, right? And you can use a ruler if you want to. And we can get a vehicle like so, just by shaping and turning some lines that we're using into uh, directions. We get some headlights, we get a hood of a car here. We can erase that line that's a little hard or difficult. And we get a car coming out of nowhere. And we can just add the sides, like this is gonna come down here, right? And then we'll have the wheels underneath it. And we got ourselves a little Let's say Volkswagen bug, B, and the W. So we have a little bug here. And then once we have it, guess what? We can just erase things so that doesn't show how we made it. We have a ghost image and then we can just sort of, okay, here's the hood of a VW bus. Here's the side windows, right? Here's the front window, like so. Then there is the front hood. And we have the fenders and then the fenders. And then we have that weird bumper around the front. Then we have the little tiny tires that show. In the back, they have the big bumpers as well. And we sort of got ourselves a little VW bus. And in the inside, we can put a seat, steering wheel, maybe a person in there, empty seat. So that's how I would start drawing a car. You can do a one point perspective that way. You can also do the side. So let's say if I want a side profile of a car, I would just draw lines. It gets more exact if you use a uh, ruler. Uh, so just let you know, if I wanted a roof for that, um, I'll just add more and then I can cut like so down Go over, cut, down, over, and then I cut across here. And you can sort of see a car sort of emerging out of here. It looks like kind of a Lego right now, um, honestly. If we just put some things up here, we'd have a Lego. But I don't want that, I want it in the car. And so what I'm gonna do is start cutting things away, cutting things away. Maybe I want a truck. There's a lot of truck stuff here. So let's just turn this into a truck. Just So truck it is, let's get this. Uh, what we're gonna do is extend this front nose of this uh, vehicle. So I'm gonna race here and I'm just racing a lot of things here because I think I can do it better. Uh, let's put in that rectangle again. Here we go. And once I have that rectangle, I can put a little smaller rectangle or a square on top. Now I can put in those diagonal lines from the vanishing point. And now that I have a clean start, I can get something a little bit more in perspective. And I'm trying to get my lines uh, as straight as I can. Uh, I'm gonna start adding in some details uh, once I get all those construction lines or the outside lines in. I'm gonna start thinking about where I'm gonna put my wheels, uh, front and back. I need to extend the back cab so that it actually looks three-dimensional, so that's what I'm doing. Now, Cars. when it comes to the front, the front cab, we use Edges these diagonal on lines, you can erase them. To so just by making a, go this in was the opposite a way rectangle, right? The and then I just put a diagonal point. line so let me match just the diagonal again, on the other side. And now, when I erase all these guidelines, right, from that one point perspective, point. it's quick sketching. And I'm going to use it from one side to the other. You sort of have to see your My first eye vehicle was a to see if like when that I looked how to right. Drive on was a truck. Um, Especially when uh, drawing trucks, unique uh, custom vehicles. Dents in them! 
uh, things like that. Things like that. that are they get beat up pretty quickly. Now I'm going to go in, and go around to uh, some learn edges how to, to drive make it a little on, bit darker, in a field and where it wouldn't hurt anybody, gravel road, uh, road uh, which edges many, in many vehicles really songs. help us to feel grounded. To drive, uh, truck, if you want to make up a broken so edge a or a swooping edge, It'll give you a different feel um, in your vehicles. What we know from so one point perspective. I didn't well, really need a ruler. Uh, um, I could make it better with a ruler, the right? Door, I could make it way opens, better with a ruler. Uh, You've seen what that looks that like. But a quick like sketch, just using one point perspective, I can put this the in. Illusion. And of making a inside, truck. I'm going in and there. adding some value inside. on the inside to give it some here. depth. The door handle. Truck. And then we can just shade it up, put some values. And I think There's a truck we got. We're looking Quick drawing. For when drawing. we're making um, a truck. Cars are pretty just really easy. Uh, anything that people have designed and made. Uh, for example, a cell phone. That one point perspective works really good. Uh, just draw yourself whatever the shape is. Like a rectangle, connect the sides, use that angle. Now we have a cell phone, right? With a bunch of apps in here. You know what I mean? And then you just erase those guidelines, like so. And you got some quick sketches of things. So if you're trying to make something someone's built or made, think about the one point perspective that you know. If you wanna make it two point perspective, you can do that. Perspective just really helps to get things look more accurate, right? And those were just quick ways of thinking and seeing things. Uh, some students may wanna use it to um, draw people. You can totally do that. Uh, again, for people, let's say I want a person here. I'm gonna just start with a rectangle, right? Person, rectangle, person. Person, rectangle, rectangle, circle. We got this, and then we can use that point perspective, and then we can build up people bigger just by making it a bigger person here. And so then by using the size and scale, now this truck looks like a tiny truck compared to this person. So hierarchy, our size or scale, allows us to make things look more like, oh, that looks more like a play truck than rather a real truck, right? And you can put these people in. Now, you can use this, sorry, one point perspective, to build out a person. And you can do it little by little, or you can just be like, this is how tall I want this person to be. All right, so lines go through it, lines go through it, you build out the sides. Now you have a dimensional person. You can put a sphere on it. You can start building out the person and put this person out. If it's getting too big, guess what? Hey. This is too big. I know that this is gonna be where they sit. Uh, this is that area where they have to clean up on ourselves a lot. So if I need that, just build another rectangle. You can build a lot of things in our world with rectangles uh, and draw realistically with it just by cutting things away from those rectangles or adding into it. And you can get things that are more in perspective. Now it looks like this person's not a giant but they're walking further away from their truck or their car. And this one looks like this person's a giant because of where it's at. So as we are building these things, we need to start thinking about them uh, and building them and using the tools we have. Um, if we were having, let's say, uh, let's say a person standing right here with a flashlight, let's actually draw a flashlight. Well, we're doing it. So, so if we're gonna draw a flashlight, we need a rectangle, right? What I'm gonna do it as a circle, okay? And then I'm going to put these guidelines to the edge and the edge here, and I'll make a curved line here. And now we have a cylinder, right? A cylinder for our flashlight. And then we can just put a cone on. And so we have this flashlight and it is blaring at our truck and it's blaring away, it's bright. We could use our watercolors to really set this up. So it's bright. So that means this side of the truck is gonna be dark. And so we can put value on the dark side of the truck. The dark side, the dark side, and make it sort of pop out. And that's gonna give us dimension. Dimension inside the truck where it's not getting light in the bed is gonna give us dimension. Dimension, so when you can add the value, you can see it 
pop off the page. When you use one point perspective, it's going to pop off the page. And that is up to you whether you choose to use it or not. Uh, remember, it's all about intention. If you're choosing to use it, then choose to use it. If you're not choosing to use it, choose not to use it. But make sure that you're doing it on purpose. And if you don't know that you're doing it on purpose, well, say you did it on purpose, right? All right. So here we go. We have our iPhone. We have our cars. There's all these things. Oh, let's say I want to draw a hippopotamus. What? Well, you could do it in perspective or you could just sketch it out. If I'm trying to think about it as hippopotamus, I'm thinking it's a rectangle. What? Most things in life are rectangles. That's right. A rectangle. That's a hippopotamus's body. Their head is more of a square on the body. And then it's got one, two, three, four stumpy legs. Okay? That's a hippopotamus. And then it's got some ears. Rawr! We got a hippopotamus. It looks nothing like a hippopotamus. Remember, we're not worried about the details. We're trying to get the shapes in first. So, I got these shapes. Now I can start making it round. Hippopotamuses are round. They float. They're full of fat in their body, and that body makes them float. Also, hippopotamus is one of the most dangerous animals to be in the water with because they can float and they move so fast. Now I'm just curving these lines. That's rectangle. I added a little bit on that side, more on that side, then curved these in. I'm just gonna get a little upside down use for the toenails of a hippopotamus, right? Hippopotamus, they have a tiny little tail. They're very cute and a little wiry at the end from what I know about hippopotamus. Yeah, we have a body of a hippopotamus, but we don't have a face. Well, we have these little ears, and they're in the right place. Sort of like Winnie the Pooh head, if you think. And then hippopotamuses have rectangles of mouths and another rectangle of mouth right there. And then what we're going to do is start rounding these edges and make some bumps on the top for their little nostrils. And then we'll put some teeth in because they have some teeth like so. And then they have a bottom mouth and they have some teeth. These are one of the most dangerous animals on the planet. Not the most, the most, but one of the many dangerous planet animals. So please don't get in their way and treat them with respect. Uh, the Oregon Zoo just has a new baby hippopotamus. You can go see. So now we have a hippopotamus. And I don't know if you've seen hippopotamuses, but they have some texture to them. So I'm just gonna erase this lightly. I've done all that work. And you're like, Mr. Matthews, don't race. Well, guess what? Racing is closer, a closer. So hippopotamus has a back, it has a shoulder blade. I can go in now, give it those illusions of things, right? We'll get a little bit of that toe there, that leg there. We got the face, we got the hippopotamus's mouth, we got the teeth, we got the big tongue. We got the eyeballs, we have the forehead, they have weirdish eyes. And by weird, I mean just different than ours because they have to see underwater as well on land. You can make the inside of their mouth darker so it's got some value. Then what I can do is stipple. And I know some of you dislike stippling, but we're going to practice it a little bit. Stippling, and I'm just stippling. And it's giving this texture to this hippo that, hey, it's got some texture to it. Because hippos aren't super slimy or slippery. They are just sort of texture. They've got skin, like you and I. And that skin has to keep them warm and protect them. And so what I'm doing is stippling these dark areas with the dots closer together. Um, for the leg that's underneath, I will do that as well. If we're thinking about the flashlight or there being a flashlight here, right? Then what we got to think about is where is the shadow going to be? And so wherever the light is, is going to be bright. Wherever the light isn't, is going to be dark. So let's just say our hippopotamus is coming from this way, where the light is over here. And it's coming towards this side of their self. Well, guess what? This is going to be really bright, but these shadows here are going to be a little bit lighter or darker. 
And so what I might have to do is address some of that. So right here, there's a fold here. And so that's gonna create a, a shadow for that hind leg, right? Hind leg fold. This leg down here is gonna be really dark with stippling. And then there's a shoulder blade this way for this or hippo. And so underneath the like or the the neck is gonna be dark. Uh, around the edge, further edge of the hippo is going to be dark. So we're just going to be placing these things in and we're just putting in the shadow. This side of the leg is gonna be dark because there is some muscle here. And so what we're gonna do is make these sides of this leg a little bit less of the stippling because it's getting brighter and brighter. And you can sort of see that starting to make it look more dimensional, more dimensional. And so as we add in the value, we can make things more dimensional and make it look more interesting. Now, that being said, there's another way of making your work look interesting without adding a ton of stippling if that's not your thing, or shading if it's not your thing. First thing of all is if you are going to, uh, wanting to do this, you can get your watercolor. I need to start watercoloring and adding value in. We know about pause or the complementary colors. We know how we can add shadow with them. We know that we can do monochromatic. So for this hippopotamus, um, not many people know this, but we often think of hippopotamus as kind of gray, but they're actually kind of pinkish gray or kind of brownish. So I might mix up that color onto my paint palette by taking a little brown, mixing it with pink. Ooh, that's a good color. And I might start putting that color in those darker areas. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Look at that. Look at that. It's giving it some life to this hippo now. Life. We don't want to be afraid of colors. Uh, there's a lot of people in life that are afraid of colors. Um, we don't want to be those people. Color adds life, brightness to our life. Um, color TV. If you had to watch everything in black and white, it might not be as cool or interesting. I'm leaving some highlights here as well. So it looks like that hippo is realistic. I'm just gonna add some areas here. And we got ourselves a hippo, a hippo, a hippopotamus. Oh, oh for Christmas, so hip, uh, no, you guys maybe, maybe heard that if you've been in the band room during the holidays. Gonna add some red for the inside of the mouth. And we, uh, we got some, you can even add red because sometimes they have like little red spots on them. You can stipple with your brush as well. So if you want to make areas a little bit darker or pinker, you can. All of that's going to add in for a hippo. A hippo. Now, hippos, are more like any four-legged animal. It's the same with a dog or a cat. You're just going to start with the squares or the rectangles and then build it out. Build it out. Um, for the truck, you can do the same thing. Let's say we want a green truck. Just green away. Here we go. Not that. Let's get back into this, green. So the darkest green is gonna be over here, furthest away from us in this one, because you know what? Hey, that's just the way it works. And then we'll have some highlights of green, and then there'll be some bright areas. And we got ourselves a little green truck. That's the first color of my truck. All right, now what we need to do is add some black for those tires. So I'm gonna get my brush, get a little bit of black on it. I'm gonna try to mute the black a little bit by adding water to it so that it looks like that these tires belong on this truck and they don't stand out too much. Uh, when we're working on values, like think about whether one thing's getting too bright or too dark. If things are getting too bright or too dark, you might have to brighten up the rest of your work. So it's something to think about as you're going forward. I'm gonna mess around a little bit more. There's this little truck. So you can do it with value, with hatching, cross-hatching, stippling, but you can also do it with color. And you can mix them too. For example, this VW bus. Um, let's say we're using this fascite analogy. I can put some value in like this, right? On this dark side. And I can just give the illusion, I can even 
right in, draw in some highlights like it's shining on it. Maybe on the fender, it's got some highlights as well. Maybe there's, oh, I forgot to put the ellipses in for the wheels. There we go. So, uh, slug bug. In my neighborhood, there was an orange slug bug named by, driven by a high schooler named Sam. And he was the oldest kid in our neighborhood. And he's the first person to get a car. And he was like five years older than me. So we would always see Sam racing around in his car, a little orange slug bug like this. And so then we can just add some value. And I'm not even going to add another color on here. I'm just gonna use this one little orange section here. And just by adding a little bit of that orange on top of the value, it gives me a darker area right away. I can do similar thing with the seats inside. I have this dark space, dark space. And then if I took a little light blue and put it on there and get a window, we get a darker value there, darker value. You see this a lot in uh, children's books. So you can add that in. Uh, we can do the same with this flashlight, right? We, have some, we can make it metal-like, just using the same thing as gold. But instead of gold, we're just gonna use some gray and we're just gonna give it some highlights. It's gonna have a dark area and a light area. The darkest part's gonna be the furthest away from the light, right? And so we can add some, some lines in here and just putting those lines in the direction. As that dries, it's gonna still look more like a metal flashlight. So these are the things that we're doing to start combining all the ideas to then turn into a quick sketch. When you start taking those building blocks and putting them together and then adding the tools of the principles with the hardware or the materials of the elements of art, you can start building some pretty cool and interesting things. The next thing I wanna show you is a quick sketch of a person's face. And we're just gonna do this here. Uh, first of all, we've talked about this before. A person's face kinda of looks like head on, a shield, right? Or sorry, upside down egg upside down egg. And if you can get that upside down egg shaped pretty well, uh, you'll have a roughly thing, a rough face. And a face is usually symmetrical. Um, and so we're gonna divide it into force. They're not gonna be equal force, but they're gonna be roughly. And then we know that these four, this is sort of where the eyes are gonna be because they're sort of halfway in. And then there's the eyebrows. And then we know the nose and the mouth. And then we know that cheekbones come in, and then we have the eyes, and then we have the ears. We've done this before. We've done this before. I just wanna show you a different way to get something similar. So we have done this before, and we know that like, okay, the neck comes down here on the side of the eyes. We have a, a shirt. Uh, the hair comes down onto the face, right? It goes over the ears and off. It comes above the head comes down and look at we got a face so we know that way of making a face we know to make an m for the lips a u for under the lips and we got a great face but there's other ways to make faces too so same thing if we draw a circle right with sort of an egg shape to it what we can do is put four dots one here one here one here one here and this is going to be our center of our face. And so what we can do is put in little half sort of U's going down where those dots are. And then we can do a little sort of like brackets, but backwards. And then we just go above it and put in some eyebrows, right? And then we can put in the eyes, little circles. And we can put a line above it, sort of line below. We can put in lips here, and we can put in a face. So that's another way of making a face. A lot of people make faces um, because we see faces a lot. So maybe this person has some hair. Maybe they're laughing. <laughs> put their teeth in. That person's laughing, they're having a good time. When people are laughing, they're usually not laughing with their eyes open. That makes it look creepy. So we can change it to, ah, uh, this person's having a good time by laughing and closing their eyes. 
ha, ha, ha. It's usually dark underneath the teeth, above the teeth, and then below the lip. Now you got someone just having a great time laughing away. Ha, 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 ha. And we didn't have to have all those guidelines, right? We didn't have to have all those guidelines right there. There you go, laughing. Ha, 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 ha. Now, again, not the only way to make a face. Not the only way to make a face, especially coming right at you. Another way to make a face is, um, since we know this one, I'm gonna erase it. You can erase yours too, because we don't necessarily need it right there. So just erase that face. And we're gonna make a new face. And I think this is a great way of making a face. Um, it's just working on other ways of looking at the person. So if I had a person standing in front of me or I had a picture, something I can do is think about their outline. Their outline. So I might start at the top of their head, right? And their head comes down and then there's their head, and then they have, let's say, a shoulder, and then their shoulder. That is an outline. That gives me a lot more information than just a circle, right? When I have a circle, then I have to put in all this other stuff later, and it might not match up. But if I'm looking at someone, I can get their outline. And once I get their outline, guess what? I can go in and get the outline of, let's say, their face, right? There's the outline of their face. Pretty easy. Once we have the outline of their face, then it's just looking at where these things go. If I see their hairline here, here's their hairline, right? And this person has some hair. I can just be like, how, what is the distance from there to their eye? There's an eye, there's an eye. I'm getting to see they're looking this way. So I can build out their eyes like so. Get them looking. Ooh, looks a little weird, right? Well, that's because we need nose. Here's a nose, right? Here's a nose, someone's nose. Having full lines like that kind of makes it look cartoonish. So let's just make a nose like that. Little circles. Or if you don't like making your noses like that, guess what? You can just make them um, like this, a little value. Now it looks three-dimensional. Now I can put in a mouth, right? I could put in eyebrows, like so. The illusion of a nose. And then I got a face, a face, just by thinking of their outlines, outlines, the outlines of a person. Now, you can also use the grid method. That's a great way to get something more in, uh, realistic, but this is just a quick way of sketching, sketching, getting ideas. And if you don't like eyes, guess what? Here's a trick for getting rid of eyes. Just fill it in with value. A dark spot, right? That, that makes it look more realistic. There's always some shadow underneath the person's chin, unless their light is coming from below, then it changes, but mostly because their sun is always above the horizon line, or the sun is always coming down on the person, and so the shadows are usually going down, unless there's some artificial light like a fire or there was something like that, then light would come up and that would change all of your shadows. So things to think about Well, you are painting. You can add value, right? You can add value to your artwork uh, just by putting in... By adding in small amounts of yellows and browns. Normally, we think of people being like white, black, and the many different uh, ethnicities in between. But most people's skin color is a yellowish beige um, base, kind of, from what I've seen in my time and how to paint and from what I've seen other artists use, um, especially in an additive uh, practice of mixing paint. So don't be afraid of starting with a yellow, especially a light yellow, and then building up from there and then adding some browns. Uh, definitely don't be afraid of using reds or pinks, especially where like they would go on a cheek, on a forehead. Um, this is what shows that we're hot and bearish, these little bursts of redness on our face. And so we can do that uh, with our 
work too. We can also add in darker pigments where we want shadows to be. We don't have to just use black. People, we can use that's just the a quick actual way of color sketching a person to make it, uh, especially with an outline. Out you can get things look more really quick, and they look more realistic. Um, remember, just adding value like this into things gives it uh, a pop. It will make it look more interesting. It will give it dimension in your work. And I look, look, I that was a bad drawing. And why I say bad, I didn't spend a lot of time on it. Um, and so just by adding a little bit of color, I can correct a lot of it and give it dimension so that it looks better. And people would see this and be like, oh, you're an amazing artist. And I'd just be like, oh yeah, those are just some quick tricks I know to make things look better and look more interesting. Now, you're gonna play around with this today or you have been playing around with this. Our next idea is going to be jumping off of these ideas of taking one point perspective, taking boxes, um, quick sketches of people, and then we're gonna start putting them into things to build worlds, to build stories. Um, this is what we wanna do as people. We wanna convince people that the things that we're making are interesting and they should look at them and see them. And when we are looking at things, a lot of times we're like, why? Why are we looking at this? Why would we want to look at this? Why would we want to spend time with it? And that's something that you and I have to start understanding about ourselves is that sometimes we want to look at things because they're colorful. We want to look at things because they tell us a story. But if it's just sort of doesn't have a full through line, it's hard to look at. And people have a tough time understanding it. Ooh, something I want to teach you about hair really quickly. Um, let's do this. I'm going to get some color. You can pick any color hair you want, okay? It doesn't matter. I'm going to use brown just because it's easy uh, to do. It's right here, and it's going to work pretty quickly. I'm just going to add brown here. I'm going to add brown at the roots because that's usually where it's darker. And then where it's closest to the face, that's where it's going to be darker. Anywhere that's close in the background. And then there might be some dark edges here, okay? And so I'm just going to fill that in. And that doesn't look like hair yet. But if I clean off my brush and start dragging some of this out and leaving some white areas, it's going to give the illusion of hair a lot quicker. And so you're gonna start seeing that. And if I go back with like say a darker color, this really dark brown, and then add that in where it's close to the face and on the roots, you can start seeing anywhere it bends, you can start seeing that hair becomes a little bit more dimensional and the parts that I'm not coloring become the highlights of that hair. And so just by connecting big areas adding some dark values, having some light or mid-tone values in there, you'll get the illusion of hair pretty quickly. We can even do it with colored hair. This purple hair that I did a little bit ago. I can go back in with the purple now that's dried and then add some darker tones, especially where it's closer, and then make some highlights and it'll give the illusion that there's some hair there, right? some hair that this person is wearing on their head. So, there we go. Some things today of just learning and trying. Could put a street in, watch this, straight. There's a straight right there. I just put in some value of gray on the ground and it looks like a street. It does not take a lot. I might add a shadow here, right? to add a little bit of placement to these things. There's a street, this car's gonna hit this car if it doesn't get out of the way. Pretty easy, pretty easy. So play around with it. Uh, take a picture once it's fully colored. Um, I only wanna see white in the highlights. Only wanna see white in the highlights. Cover the whole page with something. Add more drawings. Make it look interesting. Make it look interesting. You all have this, so what you do from here is gonna be cool. It's gonna be different. Maybe this hippopotamus is eating this person. This person's feeding something to this hippopotamus. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe these people are watching a movie or waiting for a bus. 
I don't know, you have a pencil, you have erasers, you have watercolor sets, you have everything you need to make this into something interesting. We have several different elements. That's your turn to make it look unique. Good luck.